is losing. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to do it wrong to do it right. How else are you going to know unless you just step in shit? And that barely ever happens. So when you're doing something for the first time, it's rare you're ever going to do it right. It's rare. It's not going to be cost. Uh, you know, it's not going. It's not going to be costly. But it's also rare that I would ever quit and take it as a loss. So mm -hmm. I don't consider. I don't do losses. I just keep working until I win. So mm -hmm. if I'm in a fight and I get punched, it doesn't mean I lost. Or if I get knocked out, I'm getting back up and I'm swinging harder. But as long as I can get up, I'm going to keep fighting. Well, you know, you're, you're iconic for your generation. I think that people observe your attitude. It's, it's just sort of this, um, you, you talk about lifestyle, and I think that's part of it, but it's also spirit. Mm -hmm. You have a certain kind of spirit that people identify with uh, to the point where if you were gone tomorrow, people would probably be talking about you 20 years from now. Mm -hmm. Another person who had a similar type of spirit was actually Tupac Shakur. Yeah. Now, I'm curious. I never asked you this. Have, did you ever run across or, like, cross paths with Pac? I mean, you know, I was in the game when, when hip-hop, I was talking to Jay Gunner about this, was a whole completely different monster of competitiveness. There was Nas, there was Biggie, there was Pac. You know, it was, you know, all these different artists that went to Wu-Tang at one time being competitive. So I was there a lot for, uh, like, I was there when Biggie and, and, and Pac were in the, in the, in the club in L.A., and, and J.O. Felony was performing. Like, I was there for that. As far as him and I having any personal business together, not really. And, mm. you know, basically around the time that, you know, he did pass was around the time where it was that division of East and West, which I didn't really love. I thought that that was a... Uh, uh, I didn't love that game at all. Mm. Definitely bad for business. Bad for business, but bad for culture. Just, you know, mm. beefing in general for no reason when you should be getting money. Mm. It, you know, that doesn't ever make any sense to me. Or maybe it was good for business for the people that were selling magazines, be, well, you know building what, the beef, You know right? what I could say? Whoever was the record company executive at that time was supposed to sit whatever beefs, whoever he had a beef with, sit them down, mm. and maybe it was Jimmy Iovine or whoever it was, I'm not sure if it was Interscope, and ha make them squash it. You know, like when, when I had an artist that had a problem with an artist that I knew, they would have to get in the room and we wasn't leaving until it was squashed, and I wasn't getting no more money with you until it was squashed. I never, like, chose a side. It was always about peace. So for me in hip-hop, it was always about squashing beef. So I, I paused. I squashed way more beef than anyone could ever even imagine. You know what I'm saying? It was always some kind of a competitive thing amongst the different crews. And the crews were real. We were authentic. We were all from the same ex extreme circumstance. Mm -hmm. So I knew what could happen if they went any further. It would be dumbness. And what happens when you're famous and influential and you do something foolish, a lot of people do something foolish. So mm -hmm. it's always important for us to do something smart, especially when we're at that platform where we're influencing other people. So mm -hmm. my point is back in that day, I wish I could have got closer to him so I could have been able to understand his perspective a little better and talk him through whatever was going on and see what it was about. But I never was really with Pac like that. You know, we never really got so cool. And you were both young at the time. I mean, he yeah. was, what, 24 or something like that? Yeah. So you, you, you're about the same age as Pac, right? I guess. Yeah, yeah I think 40, so. I'm 44 yeah. now. Yeah, I think that if he was still alive, he'd be the same age as you and I. Because right. I remember when he died, he, my best friend got murdered around the same time. Right. And we were all, like, the same age, you know. And yeah. So it seems like it would have been tough as a 24-year-old to do that. But, but the reason I think about this is because now we're looking at it from the perspective of 44 year old Right. And you look back and you see the role that the media played in right. this, right? You know, putting people on magazines covers kind of building things up right and then get it gets to the point where they're making money but they don't have necessarily how can I say this and I want to because I want to link this to your culture vultures uh, conversation they don't have a stake in the people that are affected right, right. they, they're they like, don't have well, a conscious there, there you go you know it's like out of sight out of mind you don't see who it affects you know except your pockets you know and you consider a when you make it money but if somebody dies that's not a loss to you because you don't know them you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why you, on a social level, you always have to be conscious of what you promote and what you make money off of, especially when there's other people in problems. But problems make money no matter